All right, we are live now. Um, who remembers what we discussed last week? Does anybody remember what we discussed last week? Getting data. Interesting. Getting data is uh, was uploaded to YouTube. It wasn't a live class. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, Zakaria wants to say something. Zakaria, let's hear you. Hello. Good evening. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Awesome, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. All right. Thank you very much for that. Mm, awesome. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Zachary. Yeah, we mentioned sliders too as a very important chat, right? Awesome stuff. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, today, I'm going to be taking us on a project today. Today's project is going to be very interesting, I think, because it's also a um, real-world project. So like we said, um, what I need you to do right now is to give me your 100%. You're just going to be here for an hour, right? Max, one hour, 30 minutes. That's how long you're going to be spending on this call. So what I need you to do is, within this one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, give me your attention. Just let me walk through it and then you can now attempt to also um, practice alongside following the video once it's been uploaded. I don't want a situation where um, I'm doing stuff and then when I'm saying stuff and I'm explaining stuff, your attention is on your system trying to do the last thing that I did. And then when you now come back, we've already made a lot of progress. Like you just look up and you're seeing a lot of colors and charts around and you're like, how did you do that? So um, th that's what we're going to do today. So today, let me show you our project requirement. Let me share screen. Can you all see my screen? OK, awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's close this. So. First off, let's look at um, let's look at this data set before we go to check the project requirement. That will help us understand what we are dealing with. Let's see HR data set. Okay, so this is the data set that we are looking at, right? Let's take a look at this. Um, first off, we have. I hope. Um, okay, I need to be sure. Like this is the data data. From the beginning oh, exactly okay so first thing we have employee name right so this is supposed to like by hr data we mean staff we mean that this is the data set for a company containing its staff and members of the organization are we together so here we have an um, employee name this is the id number of the employee this is the salary the person earns this is the position of the person in the organization this is the state the person is from right we have m a CX, Texas, and the rest of them. We have the zip um, zip code of the employee, date of birth of the employee, 
we further have what um, the gender or sex of the employee. Um, next to that, we have the marital description or marriage st marital status of the employee. We also have the racial description of the employee, which talked about um, which tells us if the employee is either um, American, India, American or Indian, um, Asian, Black or African, and stuff. So th that's what we have under racial description. Next, we have the date that the employee was hired and the year he was hired. More to that, we have the date of termination, right? The, for those that are no longer working with the company anymore. Are we together? So for those not working with the company anymore, we have date of termination, and then we have the reason for their termination here. Now, the reason for their termination, some of them we see career change, some of them is we see the same thing like as some of them had to return to school, some of them was for attendance, some of them left for another position. So some of them was performance issue that made the, that cost um, them to be fired. Next, we have employee status. Now in employee status, we have, um, here we have employee status, here we also have employee status. In employee status, we have active, um, active voluntarily terminated and inactive and those. We further have the department the employee is working in. So this is his department. First, we had position, right? And then the, on the other hand, we have the department the employee is in. And then next, we have the name of the manager of that employee. We also have recruitment source. So it means how did we recruit this employee? Are we together? So some of them are from LinkedIn. Other ones are from Google search. Other ones are from um, online web applications, websites, career builder, diversity job fair, different, even sometimes some of them were employed uh, from Indeed and referrals. So those are recruitment sources. Next, we have performance score. On that performance score, you can see that some people exceed performance, some people fully mix performance, some people need impro improvement, and then some people um, peep. Next, we have um, the uh, engagement survey, right? Now, this engagement survey, you know how we take up survey now, on like on a scale of zero to five, are we together to see? So those are above four are doing well and all of that. We also have um, employee satisfaction, right? So this survey also is supposed to help with how satisfied we are with the employees. Some of them are on one star, two star, down to five star. Next to that, we have, um, what's this? Project concluded. Did I get that way? Project, okay, special project count that is executed by each employee. So here, some of them, a lot of them have zeros. Some of them have four, six projects that have been concluded. Then we have last performance review date and then we also have days um late that's the number of days they were late in the last 30 days are we together so we have days late last 30 so this is number of days those employees were late in the last 30 days last last um, we have number of days they were absent and then we have employee status again so i'm just going to we're just going to work on this data set. Let me do something. Um, okay, so I'm just going to delete these other sheets. You might find a lot of sheets in here, and it's because I've used this data set with some other people on Excel. So mm -hmm. if you find those, feel free to just not look at it at all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to remove these and what other modification have i made to this data set again i'm also going to remove this okay the reason why i'm removing them is because some of those things that i did were are things that i have to redo again in power bi so i can teach us how i got those right so i don't want a situation where um everything looks perfect and we don't have to do some cleanup so let me just save this do we understand this data that we've gone through so far? Okay, makes sense. All right. Now, from this um the, from this data set, this is what um this is our requirement for this project. This is what we are being asked. Um, somebody needs to log in. It's just admin. Okay, so from this data set, this is the requirements that we have. In this um this is the remember we said. Three documents that will always that should always come with your data set. First off, 
we need to have the data set itself second document that should come to you <clears throat> second document that should come is what who can who remembers that second document is field description document right that explains all the columns are we together then the third document is project requirement that tells you what the client wants you to get from that data so project requirement field description and the data set all right let's take that up um here we have um in this our requirements page first of the first requirement is that on the first page of our analysis we want to see the hr data overview are we together so part of the overview is supposed to give us total count of employees right um employment status ratio to tell us the ratio of active employees to the to inactive employees in the data set next we need to see numbers of employees by recruitment source so how many did you get from indeed how many do you get from linkedin and all of that furthermore we also need to see numbers of employees by department so how many employees are in each department this is what this dashboard of hr overview is supposed to be showing are we together next we are supposed to also see the hiring trend of the employee so how many people we hired per year that's what we're saying here then the next um dashboard i want to see is only for active employees right so under the active employees we want to see the total number of active employees here we said total number of employees so it will tell us both active and inactive here on that active page we want to see the total number of active employees ratio of their performance of their performance score so of this active employee how many of their performance are fully meets requirement exceed requirements is needs improvement that's what they're saying here furthermore we want to see numbers of employees by department for only active employees and then let's add to that we want to also see hiring trend by year of high and active employee next off we have inactive employees and in the inactive employees we need to see total number of inactive employees employee employment status ratio so we want to see those of them that are inactive how many of them were voluntarily terminated like how many of them were fired without cause and how many of them were fired for a reason do you understand so that's voluntarily terminated and terminated for a reason or for cause so we need to see that ratio also next we need to see performance score of those inactive employees and then lastly we need to see also their hiring trend by the time we've done all of this yes yes i am okay is who else is having that same challenge okay i'm just going to stop the screen and reshare again so that we let's share again okay can you all see my screen now okay all right awesome so for inactive employee we need to see the total number of inactive employee those that were terminated for cause and those that were voluntarily terminated and then we also need to see their performance score and then the please can you all mute your audio some of us have background noises and then we also need to see the termination trend so i'm just going to go back to power bi and pick this data set then we can start working on that immediately okay so i'm not going to walk through how we get to import data again we already have materials on that right on the channel how to import excel files csv files mysql files text files and the rest of them i'm, I'm not sure if i've even uploaded all of them so okay let's take hr data this is the data set so i'm taking that we all have a data set in, a, in the group so um if you when you need to practice just download from the group and do that okay so we can see that we have the data set here all right so um the first thing we're going to do in this we've never had to talk about cleaning data right but what we're going to do is we, in this data instead of load and start analyzing immediately we're going to go through power query to do some some cleaning on this data set for instance 
you can see that some of the columns that we have here is column 26, column 27. There are no values inside, right? So we'll just check through that and see how we can tidy that up and get it ready for analysis. So instead of me to hit on load now, I'm going to hit on transform data. Are we together? If I load, it's going to be that my data is clean enough for analysis. But if I'm not sure if my data is clean enough for analysis and I need to cross check my data set, if it's good enough for analysis, then I have to do transform data. So here we're going to use transform data for the first time. So in Power, in Power BI, we have a very powerful tool for data transformation. It's called Power Query. I'm going to make a video on transforming data and then put it on the channel and also give us updates about that. So we may not be able to talk about it as a topic. You know how we do now. When we want to talk about something, we deal with it like as a topic. But today we are just working over a project. So we may not be able to deal with it as a topic, as a topic. But I, if you remind me, I won't forget even. But just try once in a while, just ask if I've done it. So that I'll just make a video on transforming um, transforming or cleaning data with Power Query in Power BI and then upload it so that all of us can have access to that. Okay, so um, looking at this, at this um, chart here, you can see a lot of like a bar chart above here, each of the columns here. Are we together and stuff? So you may not know what that means, but I'm going to explain it to us. Also, you would also notice that um, by this, by my right hand side, there's applied steps. So in Power Query, everything that you do in Power Query is saved as a step. Let me show you something. For instance, if I, let me remove one of these columns. Go to um, choose columns, choose columns. If I remove one of these columns, now let's say column 27 and column 26. Let me remove these two here. If I do that, you notice that that step that I just did now, you, if you check on the apply step, you see that a new step has been added to say, remove other columns. Can you see this? Yes, remove other columns. A new step was just added. If I need to control Z that, I can not use control Z to get it back. The only way I can get it back is to delete this step that I just applied here. So if I hit on the X, it means that those columns I just removed will come back again, column 26 and column 27. They will all come back. Are we together? All right. So that's basically how Power Query works. Everything that you do is going to be recorded under applied steps. If you need to undo it, you just have to delete the step. Now, under this applied step, you would notice that there are about four steps that have been applied already. We didn't apply this, so you might be asking, when did we apply these steps? The first step that we have here is source. Now, this source step is a step that we took when we connected to the data set, like when we are going to pick the data set from desktop. Do you remember? Yes, where our folder opened and we're going to pick the data, we went directly to the source. That's the source step. The next step is the navigation. Do you remember when we came to Navigator? When we got to the navigator, we selected sheet, and then instead of load, we now hit transform. That's the second step that we took. Yeah, so that one is called the navigation step. So that's the step recorded here. Are we together? Now, if you notice this navigation, you notice that row number one here has employee name, employee ID. It means that just like in Excel, if we go back to Excel to go and check that same data set now, do you now see that row number one has our, in Excel, row number one has all the column names pretty much. But because Power Query does not work like that, or Power BI does not work like that, Power BI will need to, instead of having column A, column B, column C, like the way we have in Excel, Power BI moves this, your first row here, into column names by default. Are we together? So your data set will not, yes, your data set will not start from row number one instead of row number two. But in Excel, your data set starts from row number two. Now, if you look at this data set from the navigation or from the navigation step, you notice that all our column names are in row number one, row, um, row number one. Let me let somebody, somebody in. Awesome. Okay, you notice that all our data sets in here from this navigation step are in row number one. So for, but if you go and check the title, column title, you see column one, column two, column three, 
instead of ABCD like Excel. So what Power BI does is that Power BI now applies a step called promoted headers. That promoted header step is now what is going to move our um, this thing, our data from our first row of data into column, into column names. Do you understand? Do you understand that the first row, our first row of data has been moved the moment we move to promoted headers? If I go back to navigation, you see, you see employee, employee ID. Sorry, I didn't get that. Under applied steps, under applied steps. Mm, by the right, yeah, under applied steps. Here we are on navigation. The next step is promoted headers. But now that we are on navigation, you can see that we have employee name, employee ID, salary, and all of that. The moment we move to the next step here, as you say, promoted headers, notice what happens. All of those first row moves into headers. Now our data set starts from row number one. But not just that, if you notice by the side of each name here, each column name, you see ABC123, ABC123, ABC123. Those are data types in Power, in Power BI. So pretty much what we are seeing here is that the data type of this column is unknown yet that's why you're seeing abc123 it can be a number it can be a text that's like what power bi is saying so power bi also by default helps you to detect your data type so that's why you see the next step here called change type so if we go to this next step here called change type you notice that we now have abc which stands for text to say that the data inside this column is a text data if we go to employee ID, what are we going to see? One, two, three. To say that the data inside here are what? Whole numbers. Do you see one, two, three? One, two, three stands for whole number. If you go to salary again, what are you going to see? One, two, three, which stands for whole number. And then you go to positions. Position is text. Yeah, it's text. State of residence is also text. Their zip codes are in numbers, whole numbers also. Are we together? So do you not see that now Power BI has helped us to take, like Power BI has automatically taken steps for us that we would have done manually. It has taken a lot of steps for us. So it makes work easy. If not for that, we need to cross-check whether our data set is good enough or not. Or not. We would have already said Power BI has done all the work. We just need to go straight to analyze because of this thing that it has done just to um not be let me remove columns for power just to not be partial with what we're doing this sometimes you might realize that power bi will move first row to headers right like move your first row of your data to headers by default but maybe that first row that was moved to headers where was part of your data is not supposed to be like headers maybe you are planning to give each column a name by yourself so your data set does not have column name but then Power BI now comes to move one row to header. You can undo that. The way you can undo that is to just delete the step of promoted headers. So it will bring your data back. Like I said, anything you need to undo, you just need to select delete the step. Are we together? Then that step will be undone. Okay. So the reason why we are here in Power Query is to check if our data is clean enough or not. Are we together? It's not to teach Power Query now. Maybe we'll, we'll do a video on that and then we'll thoroughly teach Power Query and talk about everything that you're seeing here and demystify it and make it really easy. But then um, <clears throat> for today's project, what we are going to do is we're going to just go simple routine check for your data if your data is good enough. So first off, you have, let me remove column distribution. So what you are seeing here at the top of each column is called column um column quality for you to get that on your own power query are you listening go to view home tab go to view right under view you see column quality checked if you uncheck column quality you see that that thing is not there anymore so most likely yours is going to be like this by default so what you need to do is go to view and check on column quality then you now see that this will appear. If you check on column distribution, the bars are going to appear too. Make sense? Awesome. Awesome. So, 
So my responsibility here is to just check if there are any, because obviously I can't be checking if there are no values. I can't be checking if there are any improper values. I can't be checking manually, like scrolling up and down for each column. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this column quality tool here to check for, I'll use the column quality tool here to check how my data set is doing. So even if this were 1 million rows of data, my column quality will give me a, it's going to give me a um, a brief summary of the kind of, of how values are distributed across that 1 million row. So the first thing that we have here is valid, percentage of valid input. Under col column quality, first thing we have is what? Percentage of valid input. So we have valid. Secondly, we have percentage of errors. Lastly, we have percentage of empty. Now, those are two different things entirely. First of, if we say valid inputs, right? We mean um, how many inputs in how many percent of inputs within this column aligns with the data type here. So if our data type here is text, is everything inside is every value inside this column a text value? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If it's a text value, then it's valid. Let me show you something. Okay, maybe I should work from down up. Every time you see empty. I'm working it from down up now because I need to make an explanation to you. So from empty now, percentage of empty. Empty simply means um, column that does not um, percentage of your column that does not have any value inside. If we scroll down to this last this in here, do you see that percentage of empty is hundred percent on that column twenty six? Percentage of empty is what? 100%. That simply means that there's nothing, there's no value inside the column entirely. That's why you're seeing null, 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 null. By default, when there's no value inside a, a cell, probably I put null there. So it means that every time you're seeing percentage of entry, it just tells you how many percent of your data set does not have values inside at all. The second one is error. Are we together? Now, in the case of error, what we are saying is how many percent of our data does not align with the data type? So let's say, for instance, what will happen if on this on this recruitment source, everything we have inside is text, share, share all of these value, values are text. What will happen if we change this data type to date? What do you think will happen? Can this text be converted to date? So that would amount to error. So if I hit on this and change this to date, um, add new step. Do you not see that this changes to error entirely? Because the values inside don't align with the data type of the column. So every time the values in the column don't align with the data type inside the column, what you're going to find there is error. Every time there's nothing inside a cell, what you're going to find there is the, the value is going to be counted under empty. But if there is something in the cell, but it does not align with the data type, the um the percentage of error is going to count that for you. So I'm just going to undo this step by click, by deleting the step from my applied step. And then my data is back to normal now. So now we've explained empty, we've explained error. What else do we have? Valid. Now, in the case of valid now, we are saying how many percent of values within this column, how many, how many percent of these are columns basically have values? Um, values that align with the data type. Do you understand? In other words, the value is not an error, neither is it empty. It means that it is a valid input. So here we have this column here and the data type is text. So when we see things like um, Adenofi Wilson here, Adenofi Wilson is a text, is a name. So it aligns with the data type here that is text also. And it's also a valid input. So that's why it counted as valid. So what I'm going to do to check if this my data is ready, at least maybe like a brief cross check to understand what's going on within my data is to go through how many percent of valid inputs we have, how many percent of errors we have, how many percent of empty we have. So I understand how my values are within this data set. Are we together? Seems like I'm, it seems like I'm speaking a lot of grammar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.
all right so if you don't understand anything instead of it said you don't understand just say deep 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 very deep <laughs> okay let's take that out. um here zip. let this person in okay so here under um column name how many percent of valid inputs do we have here it means that i don't have a problem with this column if i go to employee id do i have a problem here why because my inputs are 100 percent valid next salary 100 everything is 100 percent it means that there's everything is okay if i go to position 100 percent state 100 percent zip code 100 percent date of birth so let's just fast track that a bit 100 100 100 100 now jump to date of termination exactly jump to date of termination now do you now see that we have 33 percent of valid inputs zero invalid input zero percent error and then we now have about 60 67 percent of this column is null if that that's a that's a good thing to say that's a good thing because um it simply means that because anyway anybody under date of termination anybody that does not have any date it means that the person is still actively working he's not been terminated yet so it's not an anomaly in our data sets it's not like there's something wrong with the data are we together because you can't put a termination date for somebody who is still active so but that one now that's why on that ground we are going to allow this to pass and not try to fix anything are we together so we're going to allow this one to pass because this one is okay that's how it's supposed to be on the other hand again if it was going to pose a challenge if we felt like it was an anomaly before we try to fix it the first question we need to ask ourselves is that is it relevant is this column relevant to our analysis so if you go back to your project um requirement document now does anything here any question here require you to use date of termination like that column for date of termination so here we see hiring trend which means that we are going to use date of hire not date of termination hiring trend date of hire not date of termination hiring um okay oh we have termination trend which means that it's which means that exactly so which means that that this column is eventually important to us are we together so those are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself before you try fixing any column. Are we together? Like, is it relevant? If it's not relevant, there's no point shifting the whole world trying to fix it when it's not when you're not going to eventually use it for your analysis. So let's just leave that one and, and go to the next one because this is normal. It's not an anomaly. I'll just leave it that, that way. Okay, next we have 100%, 100%, 100, 100, 100. Where do I have less than 100? Okay, so here, here under column, column number, column 26 and column 27, we, uh, we have 100% empty. It means that there's, since there's no value inside, there's no need keeping it. There's no need keeping it inside our model or inside our data set. Are we together? So what we're going to do here is to just drop these two. So for me to highlight more than one column, what I'm doing is, first of the moment you click on the column name, that column will be highlighted. If I click on the name here, it will be highlighted. So I'm clicking on this. So to click on, um, to select the next column, I can just hold my control button on my keyboard and select that one so that it won't change selection. Without the control button, if you click on the next one, it will change selection. So hold control, select the next one now we have two columns highlighted so there are a lot of ways i can remove this i can right click on this and click on remove columns right and that's fine okay um see that first hour yes yeah, so first hours is already born the first hour is already burning out before we've not even started so but where we are right now i think we're in a good place knowing fully whether our data is good to go are we together so we can go right now and try to analyze it so now that we've gone through our data in power query and we are sure that our data is good to go 
for us to now start analyzing because Power Query and Power BI Desktop are two different applications entirely. This is Power BI Desktop. Currently, Power BI Desktop is saying that there are pending changes in your queries that haven't been applied. In other words, there are things that you've done in Power Query that you have not applied to Power BI Desktop. So you see, this is Power BI Desktop where we analyze. On the other hand, we have Power Query where we clean data and perform data transformation. Are we together? So what we are going to do now to get our data from Power Query into Power BI is to go back to our home tab. On that home tab, the first icon here, we have close and apply. Are we together? So if I hit on close and apply, it's going to apply these changes that are performed on my data set into Power BI Desktop. Then I can, I can now start analyzing in Power BI Desktop. Hello. Hello.
Hello. Ah. I'm sorry. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm sorry my network tripped, up, tripped off, so I've been trying to um, get connected back. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing hands up here. Who are those? Or oh, is a half or anything for me? I did book caller. Uh, old hand. Or oh, is a new hand or old hand? Hi, Christian. Anything for me? New hand or old hand? Uh, I'm seeing you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Okay, okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. I don't know who I'm going to take first. Ladies first. Or is that, do you have a question? Okay, let me hear you, Christian. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um any other question before I head on with class? All right, that's fine. Um let's take it up. Let me share my screen again. All right, can you all see my screen? Okay, so I'm going to go back to Power Query. I'm going to go back to Power Query again because I need to show Christian how to get column quality. All right, um, transform. For you to get back to Power Query from Power BI, you can hit on this transform button from your home tab. So transform, it would bring you to Power Query Power Query where you get to clean and edit your data, right? So Christian, under, under Power Query Home tab, go to View. You'll find Column Quality, Column Distribution. So what I activated there was Column Quality to check on that. So you can just do that under the View tab. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so what's our first requirement? Let's have a HR data overview page that is going to give us total count of employee and then total active and inactive employee. So let me just go back to um, this. So first off, I need to write um, title. What's my title? Let me see that again. HR data overview. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit on insert. Then what I'm inserting is text box. Remember, we cannot insert text into our dashboard or into our canvas like that, except with the help of text box. So I'm going to use text box here and then write our title, HR data overview, right? Okay. So I'm going to highlight that text and just increase the font size a bit so that we'll see what we're doing. I'm just, I'll leave it at 24. Okay. Pull it down and extend it so that we have it somewhere around this. And then we can drag it to the middle of our page. How do I know it's in the center of my page? Do you see the red line? Can we all see the red line? Now that red line tells me the red line is cutting through the text. It's cutting from the center of the text and from the center of the page. That tells me that I'm placing it exactly in the middle of the page. If I pull that red line down a bit, if you notice now, there's now another horizontal red line, not vertical, a horizontal red line, which tells me that this thing is exactly in the center of my page. Do you get? So it's from center from the top, center from the side, it's in the middle. So, but I want this to be above here. So I'm just going to leave that in the center of my page. Now I don't have to bother whether it's one-sided or not one-sided. Okay, so now that we have inserted our title as HR data overview, what else do we need to insert? First question that we're being asked is what? 
total counts. Okay, so if I want to show the total number of employees, please suggest for me which visuals should I use? Awesome suggestion there. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I thought someone was raising their hands. Zakaria, are you going to say something? Let's get card here now. Insert card. Now look at okay. Okay, okay, okay. Awesome, awesome. Now look at this data. How do I which column would I use? Which column is best for me to use to count the employee? Should I be counting them by names? Should I be counting them by their ID numbers? Should I be counting positions? What should I be counting to get the total number of employees? Okay. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let's get back. So for those of you who said names, who said names, name is a good one, right? But the problem with the whole name thing, yes, two people can bear the same name, so it will count that it will count them as one person. So in the case where you're dealing with data that has duplicates, do you get that there's a possibility of duplicates? You can't use name. So the best way you can do to get that is most likely to use id right so here my card is selected and then i'm just going to go to my add data and then use employee id first thing that shows every time when i put employee id let me see what happens here if you're not actively speaking kindly mute your audio please thank you all right so you can see that we have count of employee here and it's 311 employees now note that sometimes because that employee id is a number what might come up by default might be some it might give you like the total amount of employees like counting them you can see that it's showing 3 million here which does not tell us what we want so what we want to do is not to sum up all the employee id what we want to do is to count all the distinct employee ids so i'm going to right click on that again and change to count now there's a difference between count and count distinct can we see these two values here count count distinct now now in the case of um count when you have like one employee appearing five times it's going to count the name like five times do you understand like if you have an employee id appearing like five times it's going to count that person again and again as five different people like counting as five different people not taking into cognizance that is the same value that is counting again and again and it's just a duplicate but every time you want to count without that bias of duplicate what would you use instead of count what would you use count distinct exactly so count distinct is what helps us to count without any bias of duplicates are we together so in this case i modified my um, aggregation to count distinct instead of count so now we now have count distinct so you can see we have here count of employee id if you're using the updated power bi instead of count of employee id i think it's better we rename this to um, instead of count of employee ID, what should we rename it to count of total number of employees right exactly now we can right click on this let me see it's supposed to let's format that um title let's put on title now okay i don't think what i'm doing is title i'm using not the label call out value double clicking on this is supposed to allow me edit it but it's not coming up so let me just rename this instead of count of employee can you see what i'm doing here see where i'm renaming from from the where i added the data that's showing count of employee here i'm just going to double click on this and edit it from there so instead of count of employee i will say total total numbers of employees that's actually a very long title share but it's more descriptive than just using count of employees are we together What's going on here? Am I missing something? 
make that 24 back and then centralize that okay so now we've we've met um we've done our first um requirement right this is first requirement what's our second requirement employee status ratio hello are we together Welcome back, Samuel. Yeah. Do you know, I didn't even know that you guys had logged out. I was teaching like this. I was just in my, I was in the zone teaching. <laughs> ah, when I said, ah, do you understand? I didn't hear anybody again. I'm like, ah, yeah, voila. <laughs> Hi, um, so far so good, are we understanding what we are teaching so far? Okay, thank you very much, thank you, yeah. Okay, so what was the last thing we heard before we, because I was talking for a while, like maybe for some seconds or maybe close to a minute, if not more, before I now realize that uh, everywhere was just too silent. <laughs> okay, so what was the last thing that we heard before the meeting went off? Okay, okay. Uh, I don't, I've changed that title without you people though, but I'll go back. <laughs> Uh, let me share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Okay. So, um, back to changing, back to changing our title again. So, what i did was we're supposed to just usually in power bi once you I, maybe it's not it doesn't work on card it should work on other charts but you should be able to right click on the title with the updates that we have currently you should be able to just right click on the title and just edit the title right and change whatever you want to change but when that's not working what you should do is you could use um to not stress it too much you could go back to this same place where you inserted fields right under this icon here of add data once you click on that this icon here you could double click on the column that you just added and edit it and put whatever you want to put so here i can put total employees and we have it as total employees right or maybe i should just use hashtag so that it's just shorten that title Okay, what is in UK? Give me US. All right. So we have to um, hashtag employees, more like numbers of employees. So we can have that there. That's not the proper way of titling this. Let me just do that properly. Okay. So we have this now as our title. Are we together? Can we make progress? Yes, we can. Next requirement, employee status ratio. 
So we need to see the ratio of active employees to inactive employees. What charts did you say we can use to, to communicate this kind of um, requirement? Okay, awesome. Zachariah, you want to answer my question or you have a question? I'm picking up one of the chat now. Maybe I'll just pick pie. Ah. Somebody somebody is vexing the let me say question and answer. Ah. Bah. <laughs> okay, so if I'm using question and answer, I want to know the total number of active employees to inactive employees. So what column what column are we using to find total number of active to inactive employees? We're looking for employee status, right? Exactly. So you know we have employee status. Next thing we need to know use what do we how do we want to find divide active to inactive employees? We need to use the count of employee ID. This same 311 because it's these 311 people now that we want to know how many of these 311 are active, how many of them are inactive. Are we together? So under our values here, what we are going to be putting is employee ID. Does that make sense? Our categorical data now is employee de employee status. Remember categorical, numerical, or continuous. Now the category exactly the categorical data is employee state or employment status. Then the values that we want to use to divide this employment status is by employee ID because we want to know out of these 311 people how many are active, inactive, and so on and so forth. So if we hit on that um you notice that we now have a chart here this chart explains how many employees are how many percentage of the employees are active which is over 66 percent 0.56 how many are inactive here we have oh we have voluntarily terminated which is 28 percent and then we have terminated for cause which is about five percent of our total employees but if you check on the requirement that we have here, it says active versus inactive. It didn't say active, voluntarily terminated, or terminated for cause. So whether you're voluntarily terminated or whether you're terminated for cause, you're supposed to be inactive. Do you understand? So we are supposed to have active versus inactive. Are we together? Based, so based on our requirement. So instead of active, voluntarily terminated and terminated for cost, we're supposed to have active versus inactive. So since there's no column that just categorizes them into active versus inactive, we need to create a new column now. Do you know, now what I'm doing now is called feature engineering. Feature engineering simply means, like in a layman's sense, it simply means that I, there's somebody who's... Um, there's somebody whose background noise is really, really loud. Please help me, please. If you're around a noisy area, just mute your audio. Thank you. Please, if you're around a very noisy area, kindly mute, uh, mute your audio. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm saying is, what we want to do right now is called feature engineering. That our data set does not provide for us, provide this information to us. But based on the information we already have in our data set, we can generate this information. Say, for instance, you have the cost, maybe in a data set that you're analyzing has the cost that, how much it costs to produce a certain product, you get, and then you now have how much you sold it for. If you want to, if you need to calculate things like um, profits, and there's no column there that says profit, if you want to know the profit, what would you do? You just need to subtract how much you sold it for or how much it costs from how much you sold it for right the remaining value is supposed to be your profit true or false exactly now now in that in that situation your data did not actively provide for you profit but the information that you had in your data set allows for you to get your profit are we together so in that case what you did was feature engineering you generated new information from existing information now if we understand what i just said so far if you go through our data there's no column this column here is called employment status it has number of people that are active 
but it does not have number of people that um it go, it um the other category is terminated for cause or voluntarily terminated it does not just put them under inactive so since we don't have inactive and active we need to do feature engineering to generate a new column that everybody who is active on this column will be active on the new column everybody who is voluntarily terminated on this column will be inactive on the new column anybody who is um what's the word again terminated for a course on this column will also be inactive so we now have on that new column two categories of people active and inactive employees are we together so how we're going to do that is that we're just going to use power query to do that because we can simply do that on power query because these are rational it's not giving us exactly what we want per our requirement so to go back to our power query what am i going to do hit transform so transform brings me back to power query now since what i want to do now is to add a new column what i'm going to do is that under my tab here we have home we have transform we now have add column tab so what i'm going to do is to go to add column are we together now the kind of column that i want to the way i want to add this column is to use conditional columns to add this feature this new column so in my conditional column under add column you find directly under add column we have conditional column so the column I want to add is conditional. So what I want to do is I want to state a rule to say that if employment status, our current column that we have is employment status, right? If employment status equals to active, on this new column, I want it to also put active for me. Are we together? Otherwise, if it's not equal to active, it should just put for me inactive. So whether it's voluntarily terminated or terminated for a cause, so long as it's not active, just categorize everything else into inactive. Are we together? So if I do that, this my new column name is going to be, let me call that um, status ratio. I'll call this employee status ratio. Employee status ratio. Are we together? Let me click on OK. Let somebody in. Admin. Now let's go back to this uh, status ratio now. If you notice that status ratio now, we only have two categories of data now, active and inactive. We don't have voluntarily terminated anymore. We don't have terminated for a cost anymore. Let me just do something briefly. I want to put those two columns side by side. Employment satisfaction, yes, employment status. Okay. Now, do you not see this is the new column we generated? This is the old column that we had. Now, under the new column that the old column that we generated, and um, the old column we have active here. Under new column, what do we have? Active. In the old column where we have voluntarily terminated, what do we have now? Inactive. Where we have exactly where we have terminated for course, we also have inactive. So you now see that our calculation works very well so again what did we do let me go back to that conditional column again and let's just see what we did i'm with you So every time, every time we're using measures, right? Are you with me? We most likely are writing DAX formulas. Now, I'm not teaching you how to write DAX because DAX is a programming language on its own. So I'm not teaching you how to write DAX. What I'm showing you is a simple interface where you don't need to write any form of code. Right now, are you writing code here? In this case, are you writing code? No, you're not writing code at all, right? So you're just filling in um blank spaces and then you are getting the same result so if you know how to write dax you can still achieve the same thing by using dax if you don't know how to write dax you can come back to power query and do it totally without any code so what we yeah so that's that's the reason why i took you through this route instead of through dax although there's copilot yes it's simpler this way although there's copilot right now the ai that helps you to write dax formulas so it's called copilot in power bi but let's maybe we let's not just get to that one so that we don't um 
so we don't become very hard working by God's grace. Yeah. So in this case here, under um, adding conditional column, the first thing we have here is new column name. So our new column name is employee status ratio. The next thing that we have is that if, do you see the small if here? So it's like English language now. We are saying if employment status equal to active, then the output on our new column should also be active. Otherwise, if it's not now to say otherwise, in this case, now where you say else, it means otherwise. If it's not equal to active, anything else other than active, you should call it inactive. So that's the simple code that we've written. That's what we have here. That's how we achieved this. So it, here we are. Now, the only other thing that we need to do is that since our data type here is still writing ABC123, we'll just modify this manually and change it to text. Okay, so now that we've achieved this, we can close and apply this back to Power BI. Then we'll now use this employee status ratio, the, that column, instead of the employ, employment status that gives us voluntarily terminated and terminated for cost. When you're working in Power BI, a lot of times you'll be working in between Power BI and Power Query, back and forth like that. Anytime you find new thing that you need to do, you go to Power Query, do it, come back to Power BI and then execute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this column that says employment status. I'm going to remove it and add the new one we just generated. What's the new one? Employment status ratio. Exactly. Now in this employment status ratio, now do you not see that we just have two categories now? Active versus inactive. Exactly. So here we have um, about 66% of our employees are active about um what's that what's this again 104 percent sorry 33 percent are inactive which are 104 people mm, exactly exactly so let's just put this somewhere second requirement met third requirement was this numbers of employees by recruitment source Numbers of employees by recruitment source. What kind of chart can we use for this if we want to see the total number of, of employees from each recruitment source? What charts can we use? Suggest. Or some suggestion. Who made that suggestion? Who is I? <laughs> Who is I? Who is I? Oh, Rachel, nice, nice, nice. You didn't answer on time. I wanted to dash your data, but. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> she didn't answer on time now. She was slow. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so here, in this listen, now we have x axis, x axis versus y axis. What we want to visualize is numbers of employees by recruitment socks. Source. <laughs> that's a socks source all right so here using column chart now if we're using recruitment source and the total numbers of employees which one should go into x axis is it recruitment source or numbers of employees based on what we discussed in the previous class okay so so this chorus this chorus answer now, some people are cheating. Wait first, let me see. Zachariah, what do you have to say? Zachariah, let me hear you. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. <laughs> okay, I okay. So if you are not for that, say nay. If you have intonated the naysayers, they will not say nay now. Okay, so let's try what he said. Recruitment source goes into x-axis, right? Recruitment source goes into x-axis and then numbers of employees goes into y-axis. How do we get the numbers of employees? Again, we are counting employee ID all through, right? So 
Awesome. That was an awesome suggestion. So you can see that majority of our employees came through what? Indeed. Then we employed more from LinkedIn. Next, so we found others through Google search, other ones through um, referral, right? And stuff and down to online web applications. So that's to tell you that these two, looking at this data now, these two websites, are they, they have good conversion with getting jobs. So you can trust Indeed and trust LinkedIn. Ah, see that I'm doing PR for them. They should come and pay me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, what do we have on our title? We have count of employee ID by recruitment source. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take up this same title, numbers of employees by recruitment source, and just edit this. Okay. Now we have numbers of employees by recruitment source. Make sense? This one, count of employee status ratio, Let's also copy that and I'm just going to copy that instead of typing it. Okay, so let's put this. So we're doing a neat job so far, so good. What's the third requirement that we have? Next. Numbers of employees by department. So what other charts do we use in numbers of numbers of employees by department? Okay, let's use a bar chart so that we can have some varieties. It should communicate the same thing. So in this bar chart now, since we are doing numbers of employees by department, we are using two, two columns here. What are the two columns that we are using? Numbers of employees by department. Column number one should be what? number two awesome next person which one should go into y axis and which one should go into x axis somebody else no i'm asking a different question now so supporter <laughs> so what i'm asking a different question now <laughs> i'm saying which one should go into y axis should is it the part Oh, employees should go into Y. Okay, and then the department should go to the Y. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm so proud of you guys. Shay, we should extend this to your class. Mm -hmm. Shay? <laughs> uh, you guys are doing well. I'm proud. All right, so let's... Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's put that under Y axis. We said we should put department here, right? And then under X axis, we'll now put employees by department. I know there are some people here that don't even understand what we are doing again. They're just hearing people shouting chorus and they don't want to ask questions. Go and watch the previous classes. So employee ID. Okay, so let's extend that and see. I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting any analytics for this. It feels like everything is the same, which is odd. Very odd. Let's undo that again. You see? We should change the chat. Do you think it's the chat? Let's change the chat. Change that to a bar chat. It probably was the chat. But that's impossible now because Batchat is now giving us insight. Let's go back again to uh awesome. Now this works now. It's working properly now. It was a malfunction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the last thing that we have there? Is that the last thing now? Hiring trend by year. So if we're going to deal with hiring trend by year, what are we going to do now? What line? What chart are we using? Ah, I've already given the answer. Line chart. Let's just go. <laughs> I don't give answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me see. Is someone trying to log in? Okay. Let's go back. So with this line chart, we need to see hiring trend by year. Now let me show you something that is very important. If you notice, um, if you check by under this data here. If you check each column's name, you see a symbol by the side of the column. 
So for columns that contain numbers, you see like this summation symbol. That's to tell you that those kind of columns, they contain numbers and they should be put inside values most of the time. If you check columns that have dates, you see calendar symbol just by the side. Can you see my mouse? Hello, let me extend this. Yes, there's a symbol of calendar just behind any column that has date, like date of hire, date of termination, date of birth, last performance review date. Can you see all of the, can you see the symbol by the side? Okay, so that tells us that it's date that is there. But for those of them that don't have any symbol by the side, it simply means that it's text that is there. Yes, that their text values exactly. So in this case, all of the columns that have dates, you notice that there are arrows by the side too. So what these arrows allows us to do is to further break and um, check date hierarchy. There's what is called date hierarchy in, um, in Power BI. So you see the breakdown. So you see the breakdown of that uh, date into year, quarter, month, and day. So in this my analysis now, I'm being asked to create hiring trend per year. It means that I may not necessarily need the whole date. I may just need only the year column. That's what it's saying. I'm going to show you two ways that we could go about this. First off, let's use year, right? So put our year in our X axis. And then the next thing that we're going to put in our Y axis is count of employee ID again, so that we can see how they were hired by year. If we plot that correctly, we're going to see something like this. It means that in 2006, there was only one employee, maybe the CEO, when he started the company. In 2008, he, employed, he had employed two more people. In 2010, nine people. And then the company made huge success. And then they had 83 employees in 2011. After then, they continued to fire. And numbers of employees increased. Or maybe they employed more, rather. They employed the most in 2011. Okay, so, but this is hiring trend by year. Ah, thank you. When it goes totally silent, like this, I used to feel like I'm alone in class. Okay, so next off, now this is hiring trend by year. This is exactly what we want to do. But that's not just all. Since um, we have date hierarchy, instead of just using the year, I want to show us the, the imp, um, impact of using both... Um, of using the entire hierarchy so let's go back so instead of us to select here let's just select the whole date hierarchy now we have this fine this fine jargon <laughs> yeah it's too complicated it doesn't make any sense <laughs> but if you notice something now if you notice something you notice that there are some icons now by the top now what these icons will allow you to do is to either drill up or down your date hierarchy. So it means that if I want to see by year, if I drill up, this is, let me go back to by year. Now this is by year at the highest of the hierarchy. So it means if I want to move from year down to quarter, I can hit on down and then it will bring me down to, bring it down, drill down. Now this is by quarter. Do you not see that here we have quarter one, second quarter, third quarter and fourth quarter. So it's now count of employee by quarter. If I go down further, what would I have? Count of employee by month. If I bring it down again, it will now be by day. If I take it back up, we'll go back to month, quarter, year. So if you want to give your users this flexibility, you can use the entire date hierarchy. If you don't want to give them the flexibility, you can just pick only the year or only the month if it's monthly trend that you want to plot. Okay. Yes, no, not for a particular year. It would be like for like accumulation of all the years. If for instance in 2010 January there was five, and then 2011 January there was five more, that's ten now in 2013 january so it's going to every january is going to show the sum of all the staff that were employed in all the januaries across the month or across the um period of time that is captured in the data set are we together 
are we together awesome so what we are going to do here is we're just going to arrange this chart because the remaining part of this is going to we're going to conclude it tomorrow but i'm going to want us to attempt the remaining requirements so let's do some arrangement for this chart and make it look prim and proper so now, if you notice, we can't see the end of the lines of either of these charts, right? It's just there. We can't see where the first chart starts and where it stops. We're just seeing the chart. So for us to do those demarcations so that we can properly arrange, part of the things that we can do is that we can select a chart. Now, once you select on this chart, notice something here. This second icon here, uh, somebody's audio is not helping me. Rachel, that's you by the grace of God. Thank you. Yeah, the person is muted. Okay, so what we are saying is, since we don't have any demarcation line showing the end of first chart from the second chart, which is obviously not going to help with our arrangement, our chart is just blank there. What we are going to do is to give it some shape and some character. Once you select on this chart, you can go to this second icon here, which is called Add Visual Element. You can select that and click on more options when you click on more options it's going to bring you to format here this your format pane is going to open here i'm not going to start hitting on format pane now or how to find format pane we have a video on that on the channel that you guys can see i uploaded in fact, i recorded it for you guys intentionally so what we are going to do within this format pane is that we're just going to go to size and style under size and style do you see visual border here, yes, size and style. If we click down on size and style, see visual border. So we can put a border line across that chart. So if we put a border line, do you not see that it has line across now? If we were not interested in visual borders, we can use shadows instead. So shadow is just going to give it a bit of character without border. Can you see shadow? It's just give put like a shadow behind it so that it will pop out of the background. Let me see. I think someone is trying to log in. Okay, so shadow give it some character, help it pop out of the background without necessarily giving it visual borders. So in this case, let's just use shadow for the sake of this. Now, notice something. I've applied this um, this shadow now to one chart, just one. I need to do the same thing for this other chart. I can repeat the same process again and select this one and go and put on shadow. Select this one and go and put on shadow. Or on the other hand, I can just copy the editing that i've already done on this only the editing not the chart i can copy the editing or the formatting that i've done on this chart and apply it to the other chart how i'm going to do that is to use this format painter so here under home you have by the on the first ribbon under home you have paste cut copy and format painter right so once i'm selecting this chart i'm going to use for i'm going to just click on format painter what format painter does is to copy only the editing that I've done to this chart, not the chart itself. And then I can paste it on the next chart. Do you not see that this next chart also has shadow now? Copy Format Painter, apply that, copy Format Painter, and apply it, pretty much. So we've been able to duplicate all of this editing that we've done across all our charts. Let me also put that on my title so that title can pop out of the background a bit. Okay, so now that we have this, let me just move this, keep it somewhere else. Move this like this. Now I can resize and realign whatever I need to realign properly so that people are able to see it. Secondly, so that my chart looks a bit organized. Now, these two charts under here, this bar chart, they need a lot of space to breathe. Pull that up a bit. Let me extend it. Okay, this is very fundamental. It's not the best of ar chart arrangement, but it's very fundamental and everybody can see what they are looking for within this. So do you not see that our first requirement, we've, met, we've been able to meet first requirement, true of course, true. Yeah, we've been able to meet first requirement. So what we are going to do is that I'm going to pull off I'm going to show you what you need to do for the second requirement and the third requirement. Then I'm going to just allow you to 
go complete those requirements on your own. I don't think anything should be strange here again. Let me go back to those requirements. I believe we'll be able to do total number of active employees, ratio of performance score, numbers of employees by department for active employees, and hiring trend. Secondly, we should be able to do total number of inactive employees, um, employment status ratio, and then performance start, um, score ratio for inactive employees. I believe we should be able to attempt it. If we are not able to attempt it, we'll still do it tomorrow, but let's all try to attempt it. But before we do that, let me just show you what you need to do. So if you notice, everything that we've done on this chart is for, everything we've done on this chart is for the entire employee, 311 employees. It's not for the active, it's not for the inactive. True or false? True. Yeah, it's for all the employees. So what I if I want to do only for inactive employees or for active employees alone, I need to ensure that when I'm pulling in my columns, I'm not pulling for everybody. I'm only pulling for those who are active. So to do that, what you're going to do is go to your filters. When you create a new page, let me duplicate this page. Call this HR data overview page. Let me just duplicate this. I'll just call this sample. So what I'm going to do here is, under filters, are we together? Under filters, you notice that we have filters on this page. So in filters on this page, here's my data. View, activate data. Okay, so here's my data by this side. So under filters on this page, what I can do is, where's that employment status ratio that we have here? employment status ratio, I can pull it to drag it and drop it inside filters on this page. Now, under that, you can see that we have active and inactive, right? So if I check on active, what is going to happen to this page entirely is that everything is going to refresh to only show for only active employees. In other words, I'm filtering everything on my visualization on this page by active employees. Does that make sense? It will not show anything about inactive employees anymore. Yeah, you guys are too quiet now. Okay. Okay. Too much, too much, too much quietness is not good for my health. <laughs> okay, let, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let's go to table view. Now, we have employment status, right? Now, we have voluntarily terminated. We have terminated for course. Are we together? Welcome, Chino. So, uh, what am I doing? Where's back to Power BI? Okay, so see what I'm doing. If I go to, if I want to filter this, my data, if I go back to this employment status and I uncheck active, what am I going to be seeing? If I click on, okay, what would my, the rest of my data be like? It's going to only have voluntarily act, um, Every all the rows left will be terminated for cause or voluntarily terminated. What I've just done is filter. So I filtered out active. So all the data sets that is left is for voluntarily terminated and terminated for cause. Make sense? That's that's what I just did. Hello, are we together? Put active back again. If I do the same thing for department, I want to see only production department. If I uncheck everything, I maybe select only IT. Right, you can see that what is left of my data is in the whole data set is only IT. I've hidden the rows for production department, blah 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 department, all of those. I've hidden all of those. So that's exactly what we do when we filter. We select, excuse me, we select a subset of our table and visualize with it. So if I come back to this my chart now and I'm saying I want to see only for active employees. I can't be saying, how do I, I can't start writing formulas of how to remove or subtract inactive employees from this total number. I can't start doing all of those for this chart. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull my employment status and drop it under filters on this page. Now, if I drop it under filters on this page, I have active, inactive now. So if I check on only active, it means that everything I'll be seeing on this page will be from that data set of only active employees. I won't be seeing anything concerning inactive anymore. Now, let's see an example. Total number of employees that we have here is how many now? 207, but entirely everybody was 311. 
exactly this are pie chart was showing for active and inactive employees true or false true right now it's not even showing inactive employee anymore because the table that it's using to visualize on this page right now is only the table for or the table or the data set for active employees alone so that's what i've just done so what i need you to do is to do the same process and activate active before you start plotting your charts for the second requirement for active employees and then when you create a new page for inactive employee also do the same thing again but activate inactive or filter out active which you get and leave only the inactive and then start plotting your chart so at the end of this report what we are supposed to have is a three page or three um three page report first page is um hr data overview second page should be active employees then the last page should be inactive employees so that would be like be the end of this analysis so we can take it up from active employees and inactive right and attempt it before we discuss it tomorrow so much silence is not good for our health okay what's your question thank you too. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so like um what when you say filter, no, you don't need to go to Power Query to do that filter. If it, if I understand your question very well, the only thing that is taking you to Power Query is to create a conditional column for active and inactive right that's the only thing that's the only reason why you should go to um this thing and also what's the second thing that took us to power query again was there a second thing oh it was only that thing the second thing that was took us to power query was when we needed to answer a question so that's the only thing that takes you to power query every other thing is here so the only what you do to filter is to drag your column down to filters on this page under this filters panel you always see this filter by the side Either it's closed down like this, then you can click on the arrow, it will open up. So you see filters on this page. So you can drag that and drop under filters on this page and then check on only active. That's the only thing that takes you there. If you cannot find your filters, go to view. If you go to view, most likely you will see filters. See filters here, mine is activated. If yours is not activated, it won't show. So go to view and then select filter and then your filters panel will come back. Yeah, very well. It's like I answer somebody's spiritual question. <laughs> All right. Who else has a question for me? You're welcome. Olua Tony. Good evening to you. If you know how to write DAX, if you know how to write DAX, you can use of course you can use switch function in dax one of the for the functions for creating conditional columns in dax is called switch so you can use switch function in dax to write that if you know how to write dax it's fine go ahead and use um go ahead and use quick measures to do that maybe not quick measures you have to use measures measures to do that you won't find it under quick measures yeah so if you don't know how to use dax just humble yourself and go to Power Query and just follow what we've already done. There's no need writing formula for what you can do without formula. Let me see, quick measure. Other than the suggestion with Copilot, I'm not sure there's a measure that has switch function. You know, there's no measure with quick function. There's no um, quick measure for um, this thing for that except if you are using copilot so copilot will demand that you sign in and all of that so that's a very long journey you can just use power query to achieve that but if you know how to do that you can go to new measure and then write the dax formula to select only active or to do active and inactive for you welcome <laughs> 
further questions for your man before we say good night. Okay, um, thank you.